Okay, we're here in Brighton, and tonight's the launch of my book, Welcome to Sharonville. Um, here we go. <laughs> Tonight is a big, big, big event for me because it's taken about 12 years since the first day I thought of this book um, in Las Vegas. Uh, so it's been a long journey and I'm really excited tonight to share it. Um, the novel is basically about a young history professor called Tony Sorrentino um, who crashes her pickup in the Arizona desert three days after 9-11. Um, and all the secrets that come out in the town of Sharonville as a result. Um, so that's what I'm going to be reading. I'm reading a bit tonight and talking to my mentor, Jackie Lofthouse, who basically forced me to uh, drag the novel out of cyber ruin um, and uh, read it and send it out into the world. The first time I read Sharonville, it was um, in manuscript form and I immediately knew it was a stunning novel from the very first page. The, the language in the novel was really, really spectacular. Um, Sharon's got a very, very unique style and I was absolutely hooked from the beginning and I knew that this was a book that just had to be published. I'm going to read you a section. Um, after, at the beginning, very early on in the book, um, Tony crashes, the uh, pickup goes into a coma um, and absolute chaos breaks out in the town. Um, the most, most affected is Uncle Franco, who's raised her and ha told um, a fair few lies in his life. The woman spread her coral-painted lips to reveal a set of untidy teeth before angling her face in order to allow herself to be kissed on both flat cheeks. Come on in. But I could be anybody. Any friend of Betta's is a friend of mine, the woman said, penguin waddling into the shadowy hallway. But I'm Franco Sorrentino. Franco? The woman swirled around like Oliver Hardy on the woodblock flooring, surprisingly nimble for her size. He was finished. He was so finished. Was there a spark or was there an initial piece of writing that you did that actually yeah, went um, to this? I mean, I didn't think I, I was a poet when I was younger, I was a young poet of the year and stuff, and then I was an academic. And I and I you know got caught up in that world and I was you know interested. I thought occasionally I think I wrote two poems the eight years I was studying, and I thought that's it. You know I'm I'll occasionally write the old poem if, when I get my perfect academic you know job, and and that was it. Um, and then I went to Las Vegas, and Las Vegas literally made me a writer. And I like, when I say that I always like to think oh it was like a kind of craps game with the devil and you've got a literary career for winning or something, it's like some glamour like that, but really I was just fascinated by the people, I mean, you know, if you're a people watcher, you're a writer, so we're nosy, like, we're just really nosy, and I, I was looking around it with like the British bride, eight months pregnant, smoking bags, waitress is totally exhausted but wearing absolutely nothing at six in the morning, trying to get guys drunk to the bet, you know, these, these other guys sit with Stetsons at the bar, looking really, and I just started thinking, I've been reading a lot of Freeman Carver, I, I was commuting a lot to my job, and I started thinking, you know, I love the way he writes about ordinary people, like vitamin sellers, and I thought, oh, I should write some sort of stories about these characters, I'm saying, I'm just for the hell of it, you know, I didn't think it was serious. Um, and then on that same trip, I then went to the Grand Canyon. There was a little town um, called Kingman on the way. And uh, at the time I was just bored, you know, I was just like, ugh. And I didn't really realise, but that, Sharon, that really became Sharonville. I'm fascinated with the way that the characters, they all do interlink and they all kind of fit together in this story. Um, is, is there one character who drew you first of all, who fascinates you most of all when you think about that novel? Do you have a favourite? Well, Franco is a neat character, really. I mean, the way the book is plotted is unusual. It looks like it's Tony, and everything happens around Tony in a coma. But she's in the coma. I mean, that's the thing the writing teacher pointed out to me. It's not going to be much plot when someone's in a coma. I'm like, oh, OK. So I needed someone who was actually alive and moving about. And, um, and so Uncle Franco came into it. I think I've always been slightly um, in love with Italian mobsters. And so he's a mobster who's totally benign and un you know he's not even a mobster he's just an Itali big Italian overweight guy um, who's had a lot of issues in his past has run away from Brooklyn and a pretty difficult childhood and has has a binge eating disorder which he which is very difficult for him because he's a restaurant manager. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you write about it so honestly as well. I think that's one of the best things about it. For those people who've read it is just this initial scene with Franco when he's 
having his bit. I worried which, about that because I was, I was felt that's quite off putting. But it's it the truth. So it's so he's just found out Tony's in a coma, mm -hmm. and his way of doing things is to eat. One thing I also love about the book is that if there's a tiny element of magic realism there, so you've got yeah. um, Aunt Happiness seeing. A ghost, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. and we won't Uncle say too much John, about John, that. Um, but also, you know, there is a little bit of hints at alien life going on there. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me, a lot of things in this book I wrote about and then they happen, and as writers do seem to have this prescience, it's quite scary, I, I need to say now I'm going to marry John Hamm in my next book and it's all going to be fantastic. <laughs> so. Um, so actually, I was, I was a couple of years after I'd finished Sharonville, I was channel surf surfing on my dad's, um, and he has you know, all these American channels, loads of that was cable. And it flew up, Kingman, Arizona, black triangles appear over Kingman, Arizona this evening. And it's a, a hot spot, and black triangles appear in, in, in the book. And the reason black triangles are in the book is because I had a taxi driver tell me about them. Um, and there's a bit in the beginning of the book where someone tells Tony about about this, about these black triangles. So it was all sorts of weird um, synchronicities. Um, so yeah, so a lot of the things that seem magical are actually normal for me. <laughs> and a lot of the things are normal. <laughs> are really weird. Tell me a little bit about that journey um, to publication and how it feels now to have the novel out there in the world. First time I sent it out too quickly and there were projections over, you know, and then later on I got it right. I knew when I got it right finally. Um, and then I was lucky, I got, you know, didn't get any standard letters anymore and I got a lot of, you know, full reads manuscript, which is amazing, guys, believe you me. And every time you meet someone or you, you get an agent or an editor, they want changes. So it, and it goes on and on and on. So, you know, the editing process drags on. And I think I had periods when I wasn't looking at it at all and I was focused on other things, so it, it, it seemed shorter. But, I don't know, for some reason, I think I had great mentor, great friends, and they believed in me. And I had just enough little bits of success along the way with things like getting things, short stories published or awards to know I was on the right path mm -hmm. and that it might be tough, but it was the right thing to do. And so, I, you know, if I was going to give you my little TED talk today, I'd say whatever you want to do, do it and keep going. <coughs> you know, keep going because eventually it, the dreams do come true. They really do. But you, you might have to keep going a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit anxious about what people are going to think of the book. It's a very ex it's, it's exposing yourself when you write. Um, so it's interesting to know what people think, but I'm also a bit terrified. <laughs> so it's been a long, long journey, and it's uh, it's certainly worth it now. But um, it means so much to hear. I couldn't have got through all the rejections and the waiting and not believing and all the things that go with being a writer if I didn't have really great people behind me like you. I was just really, really thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with Sharon tonight. I so believe in the book. Um, it was just an absolute pleasure to speak with her and to see her happiness at this point in time because she's taken a long time to get to this point, but she so deserves it. Really, really wonderful novel. Hi there, I'm Robin Jones. I'm the publisher of Unthank Books, who have published uh, Welcome to Sharonville tonight uh, by Sharon Zink. Stood just over there. Uh, fantastic performer. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the piece she did earlier. It was fantastic. Not just a reading, a reading with extras. And I think that's what I thought about the book from the start. She's um, perspicacious beyond belief. She, her, some of her characters are, are written in a depth that I've rarely seen. And their uh, interrelations are so believable and so real as to be, as she said, um, quite moving when you finish, finish reading. Um, leave them alone and they leave you. It's a marvellous book. Get Welcome to Charonville in your life. Oh, it's fabulous. Charon did an absolutely absorbing reading. I've really enjoyed this evening. I can't wait to get my teeth stuck into the novel. I loved the reading. I was completely hooked by the, um, by the story. And it was such a lovely section that it was almost like complete in itself and very vivid, like an American film. I love American fiction and American... Um, film and TV as well. I'm a big sort of Americana fan and I felt 
it's, I can't believe that it was written by a British person, it has such an authentic voice. Sharon Singh just gave the most brilliant talk. She was so interesting and fascinating. I was a little bit dubious when she started talking about ghosts and UFO sightings, but, you know, I, she made it sound incredibly plausible. And I think it actually is quite relevant to the book. I'm really excited about reading this and finding out about the characters and about the paranormal, life and death, and the boundaries and the barriers. So, you know, this is something that's uh, occupying prime position on my bedside. Sharon's a friend of mine, uh, a recent friend, and I heard her read uh, something that was international American, and I find this, in, this the, the, what she has is this international part that I find that very fascinating. It's so English, but he's writing an American novel, so I'm very interested in that, and all the stories that she told us today about her family, and that the fact that the book is alive with some of that, those stories, I'm, I'm going to be reading it tonight. I loved it. I just think Sharon's great. She's a natural. She's, she read very well, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to reading the book. Having just seen Sharon talk about her book, I, it was a really, really enticing, interesting session and Sharon's got so much to say about herself. She's got such a rich, varied tapestry of a life and not only does the book seem very exciting but she's an engrossing character to, uh, to listen to, I think, and, and just being in the audience and hearing the questions that, um, that people were asking I think was an incredibly engaging experience and uh, made it all the worthwhile. I haven't read the book yet but I know that I'm sure as hell going to read it because based on today, it seems really, really exciting. It's been an amazing night. Um, incredible to see so many people I love here and uh, just to look at the audience when I was reading and see them was so reassuring. And I actually could have talked all night. I loved it. I actually loved it once I got over my nerves, uh, talking about my gran and ghosts and UFOs and all the random things. So. I really enjoyed myself. It's been a wonderful night. <laughs> what a great evening, really good. Sharon's done brilliant, job done all over. Good night and goodbye. This is fun, I can get used to this. <laughs>